Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on properties of similar polygons. Our objective is to identify similar polygons and find missing measures of similar polygons. Our real-world link deals with photos. Elsa is printing pictures at a photo kiosk in the store. She can choose between 4 by 6 prints or 5 by 7 prints. Are the side lengths of the two prints proportional and explain? Well, if we compare the 4 over the 5 to the 5 over the 7, well, those are both simplified and the ratios aren't equal. So this answer is simply no. And I would say because 4 fifths is not equal to 5 sevenths. Now, in our collaborate here, follow the steps to discover how the triangles are related. Using a centimeter ruler, measure the sides of the two triangles, then use a protractor to measure the angles. Write the results in the table. And I did some of the measuring for us here. So DE is 2 and 7 tenths centimeters. EF is 2 centimeters. FD, I measured at 3 and 6 tenths centimeters. Now, LJ, I measured at 4 and a tenth. JK was at 3 centimeters. And I measured KL at 5 and 4 tenths centimeters. Now, for our angle measures, D, I measured at 33 degrees. E, I measured at 100. F, at 47. L was just like D at 33 degrees. J was like E at 100 degrees. And K was like F at 47 degrees. So we're asked, are the side lengths proportional and explain? Well, if we set up DE over LJ, that would be 2 7 over 4.1. And when I divide that out, that's the decimal 0. 0.6 repeating. Two-thirds for EF over JK also simplifies into 0. 0.6 repeating. And then our 3.6 over 5 and 4 tenths also simplifies into 0. 0.6 repeating. So all the ratios of the sides are the same. So we could say, yes, DE over LJ is equal to EF over JK is equal to FD over KL. And those all equaled, we'll go back to our EF over JK since they're all equal to each other, two-thirds. 0.6 repeating is two-thirds. And then what do you notice about the angles of the two triangles? Well, we noticed, hopefully, that the corresponding angles of the triangles have the same measure. A fancy way of saying, hey, they're all the same. Our key concept today is similar polygons. If two polygons are similar, then the corresponding angles are congruent and the measures of their corresponding sides are proportional. And what you can notice here is A, B, C, or triangle A, B, C. Our squiggly line is similar to triangle X, Y, Z. So that means the angle A is congruent to angle X. Angle B is congruent to angle Y. Angle C is congruent to angle Z. And then our ratios here, AB over XY is equal to BC over YZ is equal to AC over XZ.
Now, polygons that have the same shape are called similar polygons. In the key concept box, triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. This is written as triangle ABC with the little squiggly is similar to triangle XYZ. The parts of similar figures that match are called corresponding parts. In our example one, determine whether rectangle HJKL is similar to rectangle MNPQ and explain. Well, our first step to compare similar polygons is to see if the corresponding angles are congruent. Well, these two polygons are rectangles, so all of their angles are right angles, so all the corresponding ang angles are congruent. Now, a common error in our little sticky note box says do not assume, do not assume that two rectangles are similar just because the corresponding angles are congruent. Their corresponding sides must also be proportional. So we need to check to see if the side lengths are proportional. Well, HJ is 7, and that lines up with MN is 10, so that's 7 tenths. JK is 3, and P was 6, which is 3, 6, so that's 1 half. And right there, you, you can stop. We have a ratio that's not congruent, and so the rectangles are not similar. But you can see where KL over PQ simplified to 7 tenths, and LH over QM was also 1 half. So they were not all equal to each other, so the rectangles are not similar. Now we're asked to determine whether triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. Now, we're not given any information here about the angles, so we can go ahead and work with our sides. And our sides here, we have AB is going to be corresponding with XY. Well, that is 8 over 12, which simplifies if you divide by 4 on top and bottom into 2 thirds. Well, then we have our side BC, and BC corresponds with YZ. Well, BC is 6, YZ is 8, and 6 over 8, if you divide by 2 on top and bottom, simplifies into 3 fourths. Well, since these are not the same, we can say no. 8 twelfths is not equal to 6 eighths, so the triangles are not similar. We would need all of the ratios of the corresponding sides to be proportional. If we had two-thirds equals two-thirds equals two-thirds after we compared the, them all, then that would mean similar polygons. However, since we do not, these do not. Scale factor is the ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides of two similar polygons. You can use the scale factor of similar figures to find missing measures. Now, quadrilateral WXYZ is similar to quadrilateral ABCD. Step A. Describe the transformations that map WXYZ onto ABCD. Now, since the figures are similar, they are not the same size. We're going to choose two corresponding sides and determine what transformations will map one on to the other. Well, WX is similar to or corresponding to AB, as you could see WX and AB. So a translation followed by a dilation, we translate over and make this larger, AB would match up with WX. 
When it comes time to find the missing measure, we're going to find the scale factor from quadrilateral ABCD to quadrilateral WXYZ. And the way we're going to do that is to compare here YZ, which was 15, to CD, which is 10, which becomes 3 halves. So a length on polygon WXYZ is 3 halves times as long as the corresponding length on polygon ABCD. Let M represent the measure of segment XY. So we're going to take 3 halves times the 12 to get our M, and that is 18. That's one method. The other method is to set up a proportion to solve. The way they set this up was to say, all right, XY corresponds with BC, so XY over BC, equals, and we'll pick a side that we do know, YZ over that corresponding side CD. We plugged in the numbers we know and the numbers we don't. M over 12 equals 15 over 10. Cross multiply M times 10 equals 15 times 12. 15 times 12 was 180, 10M. Divide by 10 and you get 18 that way. And now we'll practice using this one of each way. So now it's going to come time to find the missing measure. Our first one is WZ. And let's use the scale factor method. So I want to take a side from ABCD and I want to go to WXYZ. Well, I'm looking for WZ and the matching side is AD. So what we need to do is find the scale factor how we get from ABCD to WXYZ. Well, let's pick a side that we do know such as YZ, and we can compare that to CD. Now YZ is 15, CD is 10, and that simplifies into 3 halves. So when I go from ABCD to WXYZ, I need to multiply by 3 halves. So my WZ is going to equal that 3 halves times the matching side to WZ in ABCD. And we again stated that that was going to be 13. Well, if we put that over 1 and we multiply this out, we get 39 halves, which is the same thing as 19 and 1 half. Either answer, including 19.5 or 19 and 5 tenths, would work. Now what about AB? Well, we can use a proportion to solve these as well. So let's start off with our AB. What is a matching side in the other shape? Well, that would be WX. And then pick a side in ABCD that we know to put on top, such, such as CD, and which side matches CD but YZ. And now we plug in the numbers. We don't know what AB is. We know that WX is 24. We know that CD is 10, and YZ is 15. And if we cross multiply, we would get 15 times X equals 10 times 24. 15X equals 200. 40, and when we divide by 15 on both sides of the equation, we end up with x equals 16. That is it for this lesson on properties of similar polygons. Good luck.